frightening part of all. Describe it to me. Well, that I was led to a, a door by this tinkling music, and, and when I opened it, it was there. It? I didn't know what it was at first, and then I could see it. And there were folks on Dark Shadows getting on the You haven't answered my question. Julia, I only have a limited amount of time. The time is of the essence and the body will begin to deteriorate it after a certain number of hours. How many hours? Well, 48 at the most. I, I just simply can't have these interruptions. Oh. I've had hundreds of dreams before. I've always been able to get up and get back to my business. What seems to be different about this dream? Are you speaking in your analyst's voice, doctor? Oh, Eric. There's no question. When you saw two actors on the set and the camera, you're the camera, right? And the camera always had a roll, a script roll on it. And that script roll could catch you up if you lost your line. So when you saw Barnabas, <laughs> and Julia Hoffman together. And there's Julia and there's Barnabas. And Julia has to say, you know, Barnabas, I <laughs> You are <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> and Barnabas would go. <laughs> you don't mean that. <laughs> you have to know what was going on. Good, you've got it. What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, Jeff, Jeff, don't be so squeamish. Come have a look at it. <laughs> it's a perfect specimen. I always tell the story, Dr. Lang, the story that I've told many times. How many of you, how many of you have heard my Dr. Lang story? Oh, <laughs> Dr. Lang, he would paste his lines all over the set. <laughs> and he, you know, and I got the greatest kick out of going, you know, you'd have it on a chair, you know? And we'd be in the middle of the scene and I'd walk over and I'd say, and I'd put my hand right in the He anticipates and he started nudging me. I go, wait, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful line. Here, Dr. Lang. 
Wasn't it that? Wasn't that the line? It was here, Dr. Lang, the arm you wanted. Something like that. Okay? Here, Dr. Lang, the arm you wanted. Now we lift it up, and that's, of course, my arm is in there, and I'm going to reach up and choke him, right? But he had a line. Now, you all, this thing, this got cut out, okay, because sometimes my fooling around was a little over the top. <laughs> Just a little over the top. So, when he opened up the box, you know, he opens up the box, and, aha, and he has a line, and he pasted the line, okay, on, I think it's on his shoulder, okay, on the edge of the shoulder here, so he can read the line. And instead of my taking my hand and grabbing his throat, I took my arm and I touched the line. <laughs> of this night, inside the great house at Collinwood, a child has fallen victim to the powers of a witch. Just kind of curious, what, who was, how it was decided who would read it? Was it something you wanted to do? Was it something you didn't particularly want to do? The girls made that choice, and it was, uh, the, the, uh, the only rule was that if you had the opening lines of the show, you couldn't be selected to read the voiceover. But it was always uh, the director who made that decision. I think, uh, what was it like to work with those children on that show? <laughs> Davy, you spoke to me. You, you're able to speak again. Able to speak? Well, well, sure I am. Well, we were so worried about you. Worried? Why? Because you lost your voice. Something terrible happened to you outside, and you were unable to tell us what it was. I don't know what you're talking about, Mrs. Johnson. David, don't you remember when you went outside to play? Yes. And then you came back in to get your dinner? You weren't able to speak. Are you two playing some kind of a joke on me? Well, I'll tell you the most irritating part of working with children is that they learn their lines by just kind of, I don't know, blinking and they seem to know them. It, it used to drive Joan Bennett crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, because uh, these children are very smart. I mean, uh, um, I, I'll tell you this little story. As a matter of fact, some of you may have known that I exchanged email with David Hennessy about a year ago. And, uh, and he, he was really quite remarkable. Um, when some of us auditioned for Dark Shadows and were in, uh, in that very first day, um, Abba, I, I, had, I had never worked on, on television before. So Feathers had been a child actor and had, had a little bit of experience. Um, Nancy had very little. Do you know who the most experienced actor on that show was, aside from Joan Bennett? And uh, on that first show, it was David Hennessy. He'd been on Broadway a couple of times and, and done all kinds of other work. I mean, he was an accomplished actor and he was 12 years old. And he came to the studio on his own. He didn't have a chaperone, he actually went and audition. Took the subway down and auditioned. So uh, anyway, uh, yes. uh, they were they were really quite remarkable. They were just so smart. If both Barnabas and Barnabas will be free and healthy, if both Barnabas and but will not suffer from the disease itself if both Barnabas and my creation